It's very important to understand the politics of the time. This fight took place in 1967, at the height of the Vietnam War and Civil Rights Movement. Somebody's asking how long will prejudice blind the visions of men? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, yes, sir. however frustrating the hour, it will not be long because truth crushed the earth will rise again. Yes, sir. How long, not long? Because of the violence that exists on the surface everywhere, you have to expect that there are going to be such explosions. You have to expect things like that as reactions. If we are going to have to fight, we're going to have to struggle, we're going to have to struggle relentlessly to bring about some peace, because the people that we're acting for peace, they're a bunch of megalomaniac warmongers, and they don't even understand what peace means. We've got to fight them, we've got to struggle with them to make them understand what peace means. After winning the title in 1965 against the monstrous Sonny Liston, Ali, then Cassius Clay, converted to Islam after a long-standing friendship with Malcolm X, joined the black militant group The Nation of Islam and took the name that we all know him by now. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad means worthy of all praises and Ali means most high in the Asian African language. But many felt that his conversion was insincere and still called him by his previous name, Cassius Clay. Ernie Terrell did as well. Won't you come home, dear Cassius? Won't you come home? Ain't it a shame you change your name? I'll change the features too. Ali vowed to punish the man for it. You told me your name was Cassius Clay. I you never told that. you my name was Cassius Clay. Uh, my name is Muhammad Ali, and you will announce it right there in the center of that ring after the fight if you don't do it now. He was six foot six inches tall, and despite his massive 82 inch reach, he preferred to fight down and dirty on the inside and work from the clinch. He held a version of the heavyweight title that had been stripped from Ali after his conversion to Islam. Easily the fastest man ever in the heavyweight division, Ali had yet to truly be tested and was coming off a breathtaking win over power puncher Cleveland Williams. This is the young Ali and the closest to his prime as we ever got to see. His footwork and speed are mesmerizing, and something more is going on here. The night of the fight, we didn't see the happy-go-lucky Ali we know from his interviews and talk show appearances. He is pissed. Ali takes the center of the ring and throws a seven-punch combo from the get-go. If you have never seen Ali fight before, just know that he was a notorious headhunter. He hardly ever threw punches to the body. He preferred to use the interplay between his hooks and uppercuts to open up angles where if you block the hook, the uppercut can land, and vice versa. He also had one of the greatest jabs ever, and very good power in his right hand. But because Terrell has a four-inch reach advantage, he decided to get closer than usual to land his punches. Ali opens up with a left hook uppercut combo before darting away from the ropes 
controlling Terrell's hands to make it impossible for the six foot six inch Terrell to throw his longest punch. It allows Ali to move around much more freely because he doesn't have to worry about getting hit while he dances. It also allows him to decide when the exchanges will happen, giving him the initiative when punches do start flying. Terrell presses Ali into the ropes after throwing a salvo of body hooks, and Ali grabs him both behind the neck and triceps of his opponent. Ali did this to everyone. He used it because it minimized what power the opponent could hit him with. These punches that Terrell is forced to throw from this position are just arm punches and have no weight commitment and hence no power in them. Ali also loved this clinch because it gave him the opportunity to talk trash to his opponents, which was another staple of Ali's game. Terrell is stalking Ali, trying to put his back to the ropes while covering up behind his high guard defense. Ali sees Terrell's defensive stance and opens up with another flurry of hooks before grabbing Ernie's left arm and using it to push Terrell past him so he could get back to open space. Terrell tries to corner him before taking another combination and Ali pushes Ernie's head away to get himself back into the center of the ring. He is making Ernie pay for trying to walk him down. Ali jabs at Terrell before opening with a surprising hook to the body and Terrell tries to catch him as he punches. But Ali's lightning speed allows him to turn his head to the side, causing Terrell's jab to fall short. This was generally how the younger version of Muhammad Ali defended against straight punches. I cannot overstate how hard this is to do unless you are an elite athlete with insane reflexes. It's the best way to defend the jab if you can pull it off because both of your hands are free to counter punch. But Ali gives ground as Terrell chases with punches and lands a right hand. Ali took a lot of the power off this punch by changing head slots again, moving his head with the path of it rather than absorbing the full impact. Terrell has Ali pinned against the ropes here and throws a one-two, which Ali ducks under using his incredible head movement before circling back out into space. He then throws an uppercut and sticky left hook, which he uses to blind Terrell as he gave ground and walked him into a beautiful right hook before tying up, denying Terrell a chance to punch back. This was a very rough fight between two guys who did not like each other. Terrell had been punching Ali in the back of the head all fight, and Ali had enough. Notice how Ali rakes Terrell's eyes along the ropes before roughly pushing off. This is far and away the meanest Ali I've ever seen fight. Notice as Terrell tries to corner Ali, he punches before getting off to Terrell's left side and gives a nudge that causes Terrell to lose his balance. He gets back to the center of the ring before opening up with a hook uppercut, then tags him with a hard right hand that hurts Terrell and chases him down to inflict more punishment. He backs up and changes head slots again, causing Terrell's jab to fall short 
and uses his shoulder to deflect the right hand that Ernie caught him with earlier. He takes a short uppercut as he ducks underneath another Terrell right hand and lands one of his own before clinching and pushing Terrell off before retaking the ring center. Ali throws a right hook before sliding back to change the angle and lands a hard left hook between Terrell's gloves. He continually is screaming, what's my name? at an overmatched Terrell. The level of calm, grace, and perception of distance here is absolutely off the charts. He makes it seem so casual, so thoughtless, so beautiful. The beating continues. Ali throws a left-right hook combination, getting Terrell to widen his guard before firing a 1-2 into the opening he created. Terrell ducks down to throw a hook to the body, but Ali meets him with a hard uppercut. Ernie walks forward behind a wide left hook, but Ali beats him to the punch with a shorter, tighter left hook of his own. Ali continues to pour it on as Terrell became a stationary target. Ali is trying to get the knockout and close the show. Ali going for broke here, still dancing. still throwing long combinations. Keep in mind, he has been at this for almost an hour now. His conditioning is unbelievable for a guy who is six foot three inches and 215 pounds. But give credit to Ernie as well for taking such an incredible beating, yet still having the stamina and the willpower to stay on his feet when he has been given so many opportunities to quit a very tough man. Ali wins a lopsided unanimous decision, taking almost every round of the fight and making a big statement to anybody who would try to disrespect him or his religious convictions again. So I'm just letting you know that I'm gonna stick 1,000% to my religious beliefs. Even if it means die, you think I'm the rest.